Hey everyone, it's your favorite worst immortal player here. Seriously, I am legitimately bad at this game. But I win games, I rank up. I've consistently hit immortal since beta and I exclusively solo queue. The reason I'm bragging like this is simply to say if I can do it, you can too. And that's what my channel is about. I'm not here to show you fancy mechanics and highlight reels. I'm here to teach you about Valorant, the things you can take away and implement in your next game. And yeah, I get a lot of comments from people accusing me of not being immortal or of being boosted, and I agree, it looks like I suck at this game, but they're missing the point. Aim, movements, raise satchels, they aren't the only way to rank up, and believe it or not, you've also got to win games. So with that said, welcome to another FPS Kelly video. And I want to start off again by saying a huge thank you to all of you new subscribers out there. Seriously, you guys make it all worth it and motivate me to make more of this content. So huge thank you. Every single week, I'm meeting more and more of you in the comments. Keep it up. Thanks. Now let's get into it. Today, we're talking about common misconceptions in Valorant. Things you might have seen online, on TikTok, on other YouTube videos to help you improve that I believe are total BS and actually distract you from other more useful lessons. So first up, crouching while shooting. It feels like there's this huge contingent of people out there who crucify anyone who crouches while they shoot. Who cares? It honestly, honestly doesn't matter. Don't even worry about it. Don't spend another second of your life considering whether you should unbind crouch or not. If you're like lower than radiant and not trying to go pro right now, then seriously stop worrying about it. There are like a billion other things that are more important and more impactful than whether or not you crouch while you shoot. Now for a big one, there's this really common thought that you've got to insta-lock duelists to rank up because duelists get more MMR. No, 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 no. Stop that nonsense as well. Do you know what actually helps you rank up? Winning games. And do you know what helps you win games? Having a solid team comp. Think about it. What helps you win rounds? Being able to smoke off choke points so your duelist can entry and isolate fights. Do you know what helps you win rounds? Being able to watch the flank with utility so you don't need to dedicate a player to watch it. Do you know what helps you win rounds? Being able to scan areas of the map to spot enemies preparing for a team rush or lurking. Do you know what helps you win rounds? You get the idea. It's more important to win rounds and win games than it is to get lots and lots of kills. And I am saying this from a lot of experience. I've climbed from plat in act one all the way to immortal, every single act, playing solo queue and filling. I fill. I play the role that I believe will help my team win more rounds. In saying that, I do believe there is a huge value in learning an agent and sticking to that agent as much as possible. But in a world where everyone is insta-locking Jet, good luck consistently playing Jet. You're better off playing an agent and a role that is less highly contested, so you can consistently play that agent in an actual environment that helps your team. Now, let's quickly talk about weapons, specifically the never-ending Phantom vs Vandal argument. I'll tell you now, don't worry about what weapon is better. Play with the one that you're comfortable with. And the reason I say don't worry about which one is better is because it is forever going to be an ongoing shifting discussion. The pros have already transitioned away from the Phantom to the Vandal, and as the meta continues to grow and change, so will the better weapon. Now let me give you a quick example. Early on, the Phantom was the better weapon because it did more damage per second, it was easier to spray, and it was better for close and medium range fights. But then we got new agents like Chamber, and new maps like Breeze, and eventually the Vandal shifted to becoming the better weapon of choice. And now we're getting into the half shield meta, which means that eventually the Phantom will shift back to being in the meta. The reason I'm saying all of this is to simply say don't worry about it. Your ranked games aren't following the meta as closely, and the real deciding factor is going to be your comfort and your ability using the weapon, as opposed to the strength and weaknesses of the weapon itself. But broadly speaking, if you're likely to be holding a position where you're taking long range fights, maybe consider the Vandal. And if you're going to be holding close angles, maybe switch to the Phantom. But don't get into this mindset that your weapon of choice is holding you back because it is honestly not. 
sorry. Lastly, there's this common misconception in the community that duelists should be top fragging. And if they're not top fragging, then they are trash, garbage, boosted insta-lock losers. Now, whilst it is true that a lot of duelists typically have abilities that help them get kills, getting kills is actually not their primary role. You may have heard this before, but the primary role of a duelist is to create space. I'm not going to dive into the specifics of creating space in this video, maybe it's a great topic for a later video, but what this means in practice is that duelists should be the first ones onto the site, and they should be creating enough mayhem and confusion that the rest of the team can also get onto the site, get the trades, and plant the spike. Sometimes duelists do that by literally killing people, and sometimes they do that by dashing, jumping, sprinting onto the site, and grabbing the attention of the defenders so that those defenders get caught off guard and your teammates can actually get the kill. A duelist could be going 0 and 10, but if they're entering sites, creating confusion and dying and getting traded, I would take that duelist every single day of the week to a baiting, lurking duelist who's got high frags. So the next time someone on your team abuses your bottom fragging duelist, make sure you stick up for them if they're playing their role well. Remember, it's about creating space, not getting those frags. Alright, that's enough rambling for me today. I genuinely hope you found this video useful. And if you have any other misconceptions that I've missed, let's chat about them in the comments. Or yell at me to make another video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.